so that's what's going on in the world of film. Now, reverting back to the world of music, I have a special announcement to make. But I want honest opinions out of the juggalugalos in the house today. Judging by your reaction, let me know how you feel about this little tidbit of freshness. Psychopathics. Psychopathic. Oh, you know about Psychopathics from Outer Space Part 3 coming out. Yeah, yeah, Trey? Psychopathics from Outer Space Part 3 is another release coming out. You can expect that by Christmas, y'all. Yeah. However, this little bit of freshness goes like this. Psychopathic Records is currently finishing up the negotiations and making everything smooth for the return of Anybody Killer. Psychopathic and ABK. No, there never was no. Uh, That's why the uh, train is back on the track with ABK. <laughs> no, of course I'm gonna keep it as real as I can. We don't have to front. This is our family reunion. This is family we're talking to. We wanted to come out here and say the contract is done and it's all set. However, the negotiations are going so easy, and there really is no. No, no shit to hash out, it's just happening, you know? We were so busy with the gathering that the guys that write up our contracts never actually got the contract done. That's the only reason I can't sit here and say it's happened. But, but I'm not going to lie and say it's happened because it's easily going to happen. It just hasn't yet, but you can bet that shit is going down. But I do believe, I do believe ABK is up in this motherfucker this weekend. That's right. A little something for the earlobes. And we've been, we've been kicking it with Killer, and uh, we're glad that he's coming back. And from what I, what, what I understand, he's glad to be coming back. And the shit is definitely going to be dope. And, uh, you know, things happen the way they happen, but the bottom line is family is forever, right? Stop looking at that big fucking dick. <laughs> Look, man, you, you gotta stop looking at a big fat fucking dick, dog. It's just right there in the open, dog. Well, you don't even want, you don't want to announce that like that if you are looking at it like that. I put myself on front street. What do you want, man? It just sucks. I don't like big dicks. <laughs> like I said, if anybody can come up with a big ass fucking net, a blow up net, that'll be impressive. Oh, hey, check it out. I fucked a netting before, a blow up netting before, and that was the fucking bomb. Now wait a minute, let's get into that side story right quick. Since you want to make this shit all out in the open, let's do it. Alright, wait a minute. If you fuck a pocket netting, does everybody know what a pocket netting is? If you walk into a porn store, they got the pocket nettings on the wall you can buy, take home, unwrap, and fuck. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? No, no, no. That's what you had. It's a whole different small fucking. It felt good, that makes it a difference. Now hold on. This is a two-time deal here. The first one sucked, the second one I fell in love with. <laughs> but ain't that the same as jacking off? I mean, if the net ain't real, come on, why don't you just use your hand? What's the fucking difference? What do you here? Don't jack the fuck off. <laughs> Lying motherfuckers. <laughs> now look, I made a bet with my homies. I was like, look, man, you fucking buy me a pocket netting, I'll fuck it. I ain't putting out a pocket for it, you know what I'm saying? So we was in Spokane, Washington, and this man, 
This man right here buys me, he goes to a porno store, buys me a fucking can. I frequent porno stores all the time. It was a fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like big ass popcorn cans you get to people for Christmas and shit. You know what I'm saying? It was a blow up doll in that motherfucker with a hard ass fucking pussy. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't even get my fucking chubby up in that bitch. You know what I'm saying? That is nothing but a modified version of jacking off, dog. I'm sorry, what? dog. I don't give a well, shit. people don't want to fucking hear about you fucking jacking off. Well, let me finish because it's the payoff to the story. So That's man, just some shit you just saved, dog. Now check it out. So that time, it didn't work. Now my boy who used to live with me, Chucky, Billy Bill's brother, he bought me for Christmas a cyber fucking pussy. A cyber nanny. A cyber nanny. Cyber nanny. That makes it fresh. Yo. That made all the motherfucking difference in the world. Oh, well, that explains it. You didn't say you had a cyber nanny. It looked just like a nanny and it had like a long tube and I fucked the shit out that boy. And I busted it up maybe harder than I did on an actual woman. You know what I'm saying? It was a one-time use, so I don't want to use a solution, clean it out, all that. Oh, you mean you didn't let your homie use it after you? Right. We ran a train on it. <laughs> but I strongly recommend Cyber Pocket Madness. You get the chance to fuck one, fuck one. <laughs> now you all have the extra bit of knowledge you truly were seeking. Yeah. That's right. You want to come here to read, you got it. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about the Hatchet House. We have an agenda with the Hatchet House. What we plan to do is expand the so-called sound of Juggalo music. Because we know that a lot of you out there like a little bit of rock and roll, am I right? Some of you out there might even have a favorite fucking R. Kelly song. Maybe. Wait a minute. So nobody out there likes any fucking Michael Jackson at all? This is what I'm saying. You know, there's something for everybody out there. We all have a little bit of shit we like. Everybody's got a different genre of music that they like. Whether it be Hatchet or not, you like some other shit. My shit right now happens to be the White Stripes. That's our shit, you know what I'm saying? Now, come on, man, don't front. I mean, yeah, everything the Psychopathic Records puts out is pretty potent, I can't deny. But there's other shit that's banging, too, whether it's from back in the day or it's new shit. Ooh. Pantera? Anybody like Pantera? Anybody still feeling Marilyn Manson? Anybody got the new corn record? No. Shit, I remember when everybody was jocking Limp Biscuit. That was only fucking three years ago, dog. Break stuff! Break stuff! <laughs> Don't fucking fuck! <laughs> Let her go! Hey, I never liked Limp Biscuit. Oh, yeah. Fuck Fred Durst, straight up. Yo, Fred Durst turned into Fred Kirst. That's right. Did y'all ever hear the story when we met Fred Durst? No. Biggest buster in the motherfucking world. Go ahead. Y'all never heard the story? Who heard the story about when we met Fred Durst? Would y'all like to hear the story? Yo, before he starts, this boy is a straight up sucker. This is Fred Durst is the definition of a sucker-ass bitch. <laughs> and I'll tell you how. I know for a fact he's a sucker-ass bitch. And I'll tell you how. At least in our definition, he's a sucker-ass bitch. If you look up Fred Durst, this should say sucker-ass bitch. We have a picture of him with some, like, just a picture of him with his red-ass hat. <laughs> Sucker ass bitch right out of his shirt. I'm from New York. I'm from Jacksonville, but I wear a New York hat. <laughs> now check it out, because I'm bald. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we were in Denver, Colorado, recording. Yeah, who's from Denver? 
You know, I don't know how y'all can breathe in that motherfucking town. But y'all are extra athletic having come from Denver. You have that extra lung in your back. Where did they come here? They're like... <laughs> anyway, we were in Denver, Colorado, and the fucking Family Values Tour came, came to town there in Denver. And this is when they were hot. This is when Limp Biscuit was the shit. This was before they were like punk bitch ass sellout motherfuckers. I'd say this is at the height of their fucking, of their moment at the top. Well, they were still punk ass bitch ass motherfuckers, but what do you want? So they gave us a call in the studio, believe it or not, and they asked us to come down there and to introduce onto the stage Med Method Man and Red Man. You know? At the arena in fucking Denver, at their big ass sold out arena. Now us, being juggalos of the underground, we don't get to step forth into a sold out arena very often because we play the real shit, the underground clubs and all of that shit. But we were like, man, that sounds fresh, especially how fresh Method Man and Red Man are. That's the shit. So they were like, yeah, man, come on down. We want you guys to make a special appearance, pop out on stage, say some shit, and then bring out Red Man, the Red the Man, whoever the fuck. So we were like, Red the Man. <laughs> make it short. We introduced Red the Man. So anyway, we go down to the arena, and we walk in the back, and we're there chilling, and we're like, uh, they're like, yeah, Fred wants to holler at you guys. And we're like, all right, where's he at, you know? I'm thinking Fred Blisto? Fred, who the fuck is Fred? Fred? So they're like, yeah, Fred's out there um, in the middle of the arena. By the way, hold on, Meth is a cool-ass motherfucker. Woo! Yeah, Meth and Meg, number gaps, Juggalo love, loves Juggalos, all that shit, man. Give it up for fucking Meth, man. He's a this is shit, but we're talking about sucker ass bitches. <laughs> we're talking about Fred Kirk, right? <laughs> so they're like, yeah, Fred is he wants to holler at you guys, and he's in the arena. You got he wants you guys to come talk to him. So we're like, they're like, follow us. So we start following. Next thing you know, we walk through the curtain and we're still following these guys, and Fred fucking Durst is sitting in the middle of the arena. Up on a on a fucking motherfucking pedestal, right? Like where the soundboard should go. Where the, where the soundboard is. You ever back to an arena show? You know, like right smack dab in the middle of the motherfucking arena, in front of everybody, and he's sitting on a fucking couch, like fucking like this much higher than this motherfucking stage right here. He's sitting on a couch with a fucking nasty chick sitting on his lap, sucking on his fucking neck. In the middle of 16,000 people, he's nestled off in the couch like a sucker-ass bitch. <laughs> With a fucking bitch made motherfucking bitch-ass bitch. Right. A sucker-ass bitch-ass son of a fucking bitch. Yo. Sitting on the fucking couch with a nasty-ass bitch licking and sucking on his fucking feeble chicken neck. <laughs> So we walk up and we're like, damn man, you know, that's how you do your fans. You sit out here in the middle of the fucking floor with this nasty bitch and you just play yourself out till you go on, right? Not only that, but hey, look what I got. Look what you can't have. Well, fuck him. So we walk up to him, we're like, and he sees us and he's just whispering something in this bitch's ear hole. And we're waiting by, waiting by. And finally he stands up and he's like, what's up guys, you know, thanks for coming man, you know, we're like, yeah, this is going to be fun. And he's like, hey man, I'll see you guys in the back in one second. And we're like, cool man, cool. Meanwhile, everybody in the arena knows we're there because we just fucking walked out to the middle of the arena. So us popping out on the fucking stage makes no difference anymore because we already walked to the middle of the fucking arena where all eyes are on everybody anyway. So we walk back to the, by the time we get back to the backstage area, the security guard informs us that fucking Fred Durst, sucker bitch ass, changed his mind and doesn't want us to get on the stage anymore. And I'll tell you what.